Okay, so what I'm going to talk to you guys about today is a lot of what we call theory of how we think that how we got these different colors to come out. So in theory, the reason why we got the different colors out was because of electrons in the the different types of electron structure within the different metals that we're testing. You guys tested six different metals, ions, okay? It was potassium, calcium, sodium, copper, lithium, and strontium. You got different colors out each time, all right? So they're different atoms with a different number of electrons in there, okay? So, in section 5.2, when you do some reading on your own sometime, when you need to maybe get some more information other than what I gave you in class, section 5.2 talks about how these colors come about. Okay? So, you've already studied the visible spec spectrum, right? What's the lowest frequency color in the visible spectrum? Anybody you know? Red is the lowest frequency. It has the longest wavelength. If you look on your one sheet that where you guys had to figure out what wavelength with, with, went with what color, you realize red was like around 400, I think, nanometers. Then it went in sequence with the rainbow. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. Violet being the highest frequency. Around 700. Okay, you've, you've, section 5.1, you were supposed to answer some questions related to a wavelength comparison, okay, on the assignment, which I don't have graded, but I will. So eventually, hopefully you got that assignment in that was given uh, in class on Wednesday. No, Tuesday of last week. It's almost been a week. Okay, um, what they'll talk to you about a little bit is that they'll... they'll um, They'll have a little model. Models are a way of explaining a phenomena of something we cannot see, a visible or a theory uh, that we can't see. So, this is a model of an atom, and it's not this simple, okay? But we simply want to simplify it so that we can kind of understand the basic understanding of electrons and location of electrons. Um, these are all called levels. Okay? So we have different what we call energy levels. And so this would be the first energy level, this would be the second, and this would be the third. All right? So this is a model of an atom, say of hydrogen, okay? Hydrogen has one proton and no neutrons. So this is a good example. This, so this is just like a hydrogen atom. And we want to simplify it. Um, what we want to do is um, kind of simplify it in a way that this is the electron out here. All right, that's the location of the electron. And we know that in the middle, that would be the nucleus. Okay? Questions so far? Have you guys seen models kind of like this before? Right? Uh, and you guys put electrons at different levels? Okay. Um, it gets a little bit more complicated uh, when, once you get to chemistry because in uh, integrated biology, you probably didn't get into specifics about some more specific behaviors that the electrons will have. But you guys get the fun of doing that. This first level, that, where that electron is located. So you have levels where the electrons are located under what we call normal conditions. Right? So this electron is located in the first level under normal conditions. So what do you mean by normal conditions? Well, without adding any energy to the atom. Okay? So we call this first level here where this electron is located, and I know I'm going to have some lines here, and hopefully it doesn't get so too confusing, but this, this electron is said to be in what we call 
the ground state. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that electron right there is the ground state. So, what's the ground state? Well, the ground state is the lowest energy level for the electron. <clears throat> so, I'm on the ground state. I'm on the ground. My feet are on the ground. That could be an example. My feet are at the lowest level in this room. When you take a look at energy, potential energy. <clears throat> Questions on that? So that electron kind of is going to stay in that, that general area, that number one general area. Um, it's really not that nice of an orbit. We, we later on will call them electron clouds. When you think about a cloud, there's no specific spot in a cloud we can say, well, that's the main portion of the cloud. It's a general region. Okay, it's kind of like somebody coming to school and trying to find you third hour. Where's, where are they at third hour? Well, they're in school. Okay, where at in school? Well, I have to look at the schedule, but they're in school somewhere. should be able to find them. Well, there's a lot of rooms in school and a lot of places that somebody could be and they would have to go be a little bit more detailed. That's kind of like the electrons. Electrons are kind of like us in school. Like, where are you located? First floor, second floor, where, west, east, south? What, what wing? Okay? It's kind of a general area where they're located. So it's not real specific as what you would think. All right. So then what will happen is sometimes energy will be added in. So, what we're going to do is we're going to add, put energy in. Energy is going to go in. So, this is uh, energy in. So, we're going to put energy in. It's going in, in. and so I'm just going to draw an arrow to kind of show it's going this direction. Energy is going in. Okay? <clears throat> what do you think that's going to do to that electron when energy goes in? What do you think is going to happen to it? So it's moving around. So we start putting energy into the electron. What do you think is going to happen to that motion of that electron once we put energy into it? Yeah. Yeah, it's going to go to a different energy level where it's going to go. So... This is energy level one. One is lower energy level than two, which is lower than three. And so when we talk about energy, it kind of gives us an idea of, of um, the different levels. Okay? So that energy is going to go in... And it might get enough energy to where that electron can skip up to this energy level, okay? Um, we call that a quantum of energy. So later on, you'll get this term that'll be called a quantum. I'm not going to give you the definition today. But a quantum of energy is a specific amount of energy it needs to take to go from one level to a higher level. Okay, we call it a quantum of energy. Now, the thing with that energy, um, there's nothing in between. So the electron can't hang out anywhere in between 1 and 2. Any questions with that? Electron cannot go anywhere between energy levels 1 and 2. Okay? Any questions with that? So, let's say that we put energy in and it gets enough energy, a minimum amount of energy to get up to this next level. So right now it's at, now it's right at that next level. So this movement up here, this is called the excited state.
Okay? So that's the excited state. So it's, but it's not going to stay there. Uh, it would stay there if you keep on adding more and more energy. Okay? It'll keep staying there. But it's going to eventually drop down. All right? It's going to come back down to ground level. So eventually it's going to come back to ground level. And what it does, it's going to give off energy. Alright? So, none of these atoms will stay in an excited state. They'll eventually come back down. Alright? And when they come back down, they're going to give off a certain amount of energy when they come back down. Okay? That energy, in when I, when I do it off the step, is what 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 do you get? Okay, so when I come down, what do you listen? What do you guys get? Noise. Noise. Sound. Okay. Well, we don't get noise out, but what we get out would be a wave that we can see. And here's the wave. What do you think that color is that you'll see in that example? Red. Now, I'm, I'm getting really <clears throat> specific on these. I'm not, you know, maybe not necessarily that drop's going to get you red, but I'm using that as my example. Questions? So here's the basic concept, okay? It's real easy. Adam's sitting there. You put energy in. It's called heat energy. You put it in. The electrons go up. Now, every single atom has electrons in the same exact spot. Okay? We're dealing with potassium and calcium and copper and strontium and lithium and sodium. They all have electrons at different locations. They're not the same. So, when I'm using hydrogen here, this is kind of a simple example of that. <clears throat> we got trillions and trillions of those doing that same exact thing. So that's why you get the color red out. Did you guys have some color reds? Was lithium red? Right? Okay. Next. Okay. Next thing is, let's say that we put in enough energy that that electron, we're going to say that this is the same electron, okay? We're just, we're gonna, just going to move the lower portion that we put enough energy in and it goes up to this level here. So now it goes up. Boy, it's got more energy now. It's kind of like me going up to this second step here. Right? Okay? Is that what, how tall people feel? Like they're... <laughs> okay? So they're up here and then you jump down in get more energy. Okay? More energy is given off. So, <clears throat> what do you think the wavelength is going to be looking like when that electron comes back down to the ground state? What do you think the energy is going to be that it's going to give off? More or less than the first one? A yeah. lot more. Okay? Alright, so how does that translate into a wave? What kind of wave will you get out? Yep, shorter wavelengths. Okay? So then, what you get out is a shorter wavelength. And guess what your eye sees also? A color. color. Now, now, these colors are all coming off at the same, same way. So if you've got multiple electrons moving at multiple spots, you're going to get a combination of colors. Okay? Now, there might be a dominant color that will come out, but if you look at it, and we're going to look at it here um, probably starting Wednesday, we actually get out spectroscopes, and you can actually see the line spectrums. Okay? Um, what I'd like you to do is get out your book so I can reference it, and then I'm about done. So, when you look in your book, it talks about these spectrum lines. We can't pick them up with a visual, our, our visual eye, but with a spectroscope, 
which is a way to kind of divide the light into all the different colors. And that's what a spectroscope will do. It's got a, what's called a diffraction grating, kind of like a prism. And when light goes through it, it spreads it out in all the different colors. So if you look on page 136, you guys, we did strontium. So was that the kind of color you got out for strontium? It was kind of a red color? Remember? Okay. So look at the strontium light spectrum. They got these real thin lines on page 136. And these real thin lines represent those changes that the electrons are going through. They're going from higher, um, they're going from the ground state to higher levels, and then they're dropping back down. When they drop back down, they give you a fingerprint. It's like a fingerprint. It's like you can look at the spectrum and you know what element you have. That's why they can identify stars, what elements are present in stars, because what they do is the light that comes from the star is sent through a prism or a spectroscope, and they can see what's on that star. What's in there? Well, helium, hydrogen, maybe there's some other elements. But for the most part, part stars are helium and hydrogen. Our sun is helium and hydrogen. Okay, so when you get that spectrum off from the sun, that's kind of what you're going to get because those are the gases that are present. Okay, so they're like fingerprints and they allow you to kind of figure out what is present. So did you guys figure out your unknown? Did you write down your number and say, well, this element matches up with this color of the six we have above? Make sure you write that down so I can give you credit for that. Okay, questions? Okay, so let's go to our lab real quick so I can allow you guys to get enough information to finish that. Does anybody not understand you matching up the color. Do you guys match up the color with the wavelength? Do you guys have those written in there? It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm not asking you to have a perfect number because it is something that you just have to look at to uh, differentiate between the different colors and write the wavelength down. Okay, so it's going to be in a range between 400 and 700, right? Okay, that's what should go in these spots. Okay, this one is getting it into meters. So this one is going from nanometers and converting it into meters. So we know that the conversion ratio is for every one meter, you have one times 10 to the ninth nanometers. And then you do that conversion. Make sure you do it right because all your calculations are based upon that calculation. Okay? It's the same as number three on the front side of your worksheet. Number three on the worksheet, you had 410 nanometers, and you were asked to convert that so you could plug it into the equation. Okay? The next one has you figure out change of energy. So this one's looking for um, change of energy. So the question is, what equation do you use? Energy equals... And that's the equation I had you guys make a correction on. H times C over wavelength. So you're solving for this wavelength. That's what you're solving for. Or I'm sorry, you're solving for energy. My mistake. You're solving for energy. Forget what I said about solving for wavelength. Questions that so that's just you plug in the numbers. I mean, it can't be any simpler than that. Just plug in the numbers. You have to show that. Okay, that here's a here. That's a good question. Okay, what you need to do is you need to show one example of that. So once you turn it over, and we're going to look at questions one through three on um, the post lab questions on the back. So in the post lab questions on the back, number one. You should have already done that. 
you should have translated the wavelength properly for the color. Okay, that would have been your that would have been your first column, or I guess your second column. Then number two, it says convert each wavelength. Um, from nanometers to meters. So all you have to show there is one example. So in number two on the back side, all you have to do is show one example. You have to actually do it six times on the front side, but you only have to show one example. Show your units, okay, on that. Number three, you have to show one example for sodium flame. So, I want you to do sodium's flame. should be a yellow color. And so, for number three, show a calculation with sodium. Right in that slot. Even though you have to do it for everything you have on the front side. <clears throat> okay, number four, we're almost done. Number four... What evidence... So this is, these are what you tested up here. Everything you tested looked like this from copper down to strontium. Those are the elements that you used, or those are the compounds you used. So number four, it says, what evidence is there from your results that the characteristic color observed for each compound is due to the metal ion, okay, the metal ion, In each case, describe, now you have to come up with some, some sort of a um, possible test you could do to confirm that the color is due to this metal ion, okay? You might think about that a little bit. That's a little, little tougher question that you're being asked there, but um, we're going to have you do it anyway. <clears throat> Number five says, if you have a glass rod and it's heated and it burns with a bright yellow flame, what metal do you think is present in the glass rod? Okay, and number six, it gives you clues to the color that these metals would give off. It says, alkali metals, cesium and rubidium were discovered based upon their characteristic flame colors. Cesium was named after the sky. Rubidium after a gym color, like rubies. Okay? So, um, fin finish that for tomorrow. Finish your worksheet for tomorrow. Both of those are due. If you got either one of those done, you can hand them in now. Um, but work on those, both of those, before you go. That way, if you got questions, you can ask.